Now on one BBC News West. The new clues in the hunt for Louise's killer. And the special delivery taking place in Bath. from News West. Police hunting the killer of Louise Smith have new information which they hope will help solve the mystery of her murder. Detectives have returned to the nightclub in Yate where Louise was last seen alive on Christmas Eve last year. Caroline Le Marechal reports. The hunt for the killer of Louise Smith has been the biggest operation ever undertaken by Avon and Somerset Police. It has cost one and a half million pounds and they are still no nearer to catching the person responsible. On Christmas Eve, exactly a year since Louise was seen alive, detectives handed out leaflets in Spiral's nightclub, hoping to jog memories. Today they said they were very pleased with the response. Uh, a large number of people spoke to us. I can't give you anything specific, but a lot of uh, information about people that were around, people that um, were seen, vehicles that were seen, and indeed where various people were at uh, given times this time last year. All that sort of thing which is helpful to us to both eliminate certain people from the inquiry and also to help us identify the offender of this tragic killing. Louise's body was found here at Barnhill Quarry, north of Yate, seven weeks after she had disappeared. Since then, police have carried out DNA testing on three and a half thousand men. They plan to continue the testing, which they believe is the key to finding her killer. Although it is now nearly 13 months since Louise was murdered, a full team of officers is still working on the investigation and they'll be following up all the new lines of inquiry. Caroline Le Marechal, BBC News West, Yate. Hard-pressed hospitals throughout the southwest are to receive extra money this winter to help take pressure off beds and services. The money, which runs into hundreds of thousands of pounds, was announced earlier today. Swindon's Princess Margaret Hospital is hoping for a share of the £300,000 awarded to the Wiltshire Health Authority. Like other hospitals in the region, there's an increasing demand for beds but huge delays in discharging patients because of a lack of money often means there's simply nowhere else for them to go. There's been immense pressure on beds at this hospital and all others uh, throughout the country, so additional money like this is a great uh, welcome relief to uh, hard-pressed hospitals and social services departments and everyone else. And whilst shortage of cash for what's called continuing care has led to empty places in nursing homes and a bottleneck in hospitals, Part of the aim of the extra money is also to avoid unnecessary admissions to hospitals. It's great news for nursing homes all over the country, uh, but in my area here in Wiltshire, it's delightful news. It will assist the social services and health to work together with the trusts in order to provide beds in the community to allow people to get more operations. Last winter, this hospital barely managed to cope when faced with a sudden rise in emergency admissions and sickness among staff. And now managers here hope that any new cash will release the intense pressure on beds. Steve Brody, BBC News West, Swindon. Well, Avon Health Authority will also benefit with grants totalling more than half a million pounds, Dorset by 20,000 and Gloucestershire by around 50,000 pounds. Hundreds of motorcyclists across the region are waiting to take a compulsory new training course, but they say they haven't been given enough warning. A new law which comes into force on January the 1st will make it illegal to ride a small motorbike or moped without having undergone some basic training. It means one of the country's biggest motorcycle training centres based here in the West is working throughout the festive season to keep up with demand. Rachel Hicks reports. Phyllis Weeks has been driving her moped for nearly 30 years. By law, she's now got to have some training. Like many others, she's relied on a provisional license or her driving license to allow her on the roads. But from New Year's Day, no one will be able to drive without completing a compulsory basic training course, which means a heavy workload for this centre. We're inundated with inquiries at the present time, uh, simply because of the fact that a lot of these people have just been informed by letter. I would have liked to have seen more time available to these people probably a six-month period to give them time to uh, get, get plenty of ample time to, to sort the situation out for themselves. 
but the biggest criticisms are the cost, £75, and the lack of warning. Many motorcyclists say they were only told about the changes in the middle of December. I was a bit angry actually because I, there wasn't much notice. There was about 10 days to prepare yourself and it was here and, you know, dead quick. I think it's quite good that I'm made to take this training and hopefully eventually the test. Uh, what I'm a bit against is the timing of it. I only got to hear of it last week by chance. I passed the test on a tractor and that allowed me to wait in their place. Up to now, I suppose. But whilst it may make for safer motorcyclists on our streets, it remains to be seen just how many will be able to get through the course before the January deadline. Rachel Hicks, BBC News West, Hamburg. The search of the Scottish mountains for a climber from North Somerset missing since Christmas Day has now been called off. 53-year-old John Winship from Temple Cloud hasn't been seen since he became separated from a friend in the Nevis Valley. The search involved a helicopter from RAF Lozymouth, mountain rescue teams and tracker dogs. There were long queues of shoppers in city centres across the west today. Hundreds of bargain hunters turned out for the post-Christmas sales. So many, in fact, that some shops were only allowing a few at a time. Traders will be hoping that the big reductions will stir shoppers to spend some of their Christmas cash and make it a record-breaking end to the year. Well, there have been some breaking records at the Royal Mail recently, delivering around 135 million letters a day. For postmen and women around the West, Christmas Day came as a welcome break. But a new exhibition in Bath reveals that December the 25th hasn't always been a day off. And for one postman, the hard work is only just beginning. Today's postal service is highly automated. 200 extra staff worked at Bristol's main sorting office over the past month to help deal with a record 65 million items. But at the time of the first printed Christmas card, now on show in Bath Postal Museum, the work was done by hand. And when these postmen were delivering, holidays weren't always guaranteed. So these cards were all posted between 1903 and 1909, and there's nothing really special about them. But at this time, if you wanted to, you could put them in a special box and get a special postmark put on them, and they would have actually been delivered on Christmas Day itself. But another star of the museum won't be slowing down now the rush is over. Children's TV character Postman Pat is on stage at Bath's Theatre Royal in his first ever pantomime. He's got two performances a day, so there are 65 performances in total. So he is very, very busy. Him and Jess are on stage a lot of the time in panto as well. So he's, uh, he's got a fairly heavy workload. Postman Pat's real-life colleagues, though, are back on their rounds already. Paul Baltrop, BBC News West, Bath. Now, as the year runs out on us, another look back at the highlights of 96. We asked you to nominate...